Hello, and welcome back to the Wasteland. We're here with Rage 2. Now, uh, I did wrap up uh, Rage 1 last week. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't have my settings configured correctly, so my mic wasn't coming through for, honestly, for half of the streams I did for Rage 1, which is unfortunate. Um, but basically, where the story left off from Rage 1 is that... Uh, the player character N Nicholas Rain, I think, is his name. Uh, he he delivered basically like a, a decryption flash drive thing into the heart of the authorities Capital Prime, plugged it into their mainframe, and just unlocked a whole bunch of arcs, which had more people like him, it had more resources, and all sorts of stuff uh, that were supposed to be released all at the same time. The authority kind of had a, a stranglehold on these things, kind of controlling. How things played out in the wastelands so that could keep in control of the wasteland. Now, Rage 2 uh, takes some, some different steps from Rage 1. Uh, some of it you might be noticing on this uh, opening um, hype package or title screen, whatever whatever you want to signify this as. But uh, so if you thought uh, Rage 1 was too like brown and muted tones, this one's a lot more colorful. Uh, if you thought the first game was a bit too, you know, slow and, and fights weren't that, like, dynamic, this one brings up the pace a lot. It gives you a lot more tools to quickly switch between. It gives you some crazy powers. Honestly, if you thought the first game was too subtle, this one will sucker punch you in the face with how not subtle it is. So, here we go. Let's get started. We're playing Rage 2. This game is so fun. I, I love both the Rage games, but this one is, like just like a pure injection of sugar <laughs> in how fun it is so let's go start a new game here keep it on normal so I'll do the same thing I'll keep quiet during uh, like cutscenes and dialogue we had such plans for this world our earth so mercifully cleansed by the media they named Apophis. We had such plans, all thwarted by one man. That was me. Nicholas Rain. Yeah. With the push of a button, our future was ended. The arcs emerged. The eco bards came tumbling down, all premature, pouring life back into the barren lands. Starting a cycle of life anew. Hey Shepard, how you doing? As we had planned to do with our own species. Our plans were thwarted by the naive and arrogant masses. The cleansing of our weakened species was hindered. Our aid selfishly refused. They chose their own pitiful existence over the future of the breed. Such hubris. They thought us defeated. We let them believe us defeated. But we moved underground. We watched their petty squabbles, their meaningless turf wars, their childish attempts at order from chaos, and we grew strong. Our science, our expertise, all aligned, all with one sole purpose. The surgical culling of the weak. Man reborn! We tear down the defenses. We take their compounds. We take the arcs. We raise their settlements and townships to the ground. Tonight marks the beginning of the cleansing. Tonight marks the rebirth of the authority. So, General Cross was kind of mentioned in the first game. I don't think he ever showed up. But he's always just kind of been, like, the looming presence of, like, the big bad of the Authority. What the hell is going on up there? Uh, and another change from the first game is we actually get to choose at, at least the gender of our character. Um, I guess since we ran around as a man the last game, we'll, we'll be a woman in this one. Yeah, grab your gear. 
You don't get to customize, but you know it's not it's not really an RPG. And we get wing sticks back, and there's a lot more cool stuff you can do with them in this one. thing I ever had to family. We grew up here in Vineland, raised by her drill sergeant of a mother. Me? I'm an orphan. I don't have a mother. But there's plenty more where that came from. I'm telling you, this is the big one. All right, then let's go fucking get some. Come on. So in this one, they definitely try to go harder with the story. Um, you know, it's not necessarily still the greatest story, but there is a lot more to it uh, in this one. And I don't believe the character we choose changes any of the story. It's just like our pronouns and um, you know, sounds we make, that kind of thing. But we're always Walker. Pistol feels really nice in this one. So much better than the first game's pistol. So in this one, picking up Feltrite cells will regenerate your health. I think I mentioned that in the last playthrough, um, but that I, I really like uh, mechanics like this where like, so killing enemies will drop Feltrite cells, so it, it kind of rewards you for being aggressive to get your health back up and that kind of thing. And health infusions are on their own button, which is useful. You don't have to cycle your gadgets. I think it has a speaker in its mouth. It's gonna like blast the bass at us. So much for Ranger Jersey. He's not gonna do fib out of that. It's all up to me now. I'm taking that arm. Thought I was gonna take the gun. But Lily just swooped in and grabbed it for good. Mom's gonna skin you alive messing with Ranger gear. Ugh, but it's still got a lot of Jersey in it. Yeah, but it's our only shot. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> this is even better than I thought. Okay, now I get the gun. Yeah, this one also starts a lot faster. <laughs> If you were around for the the first episode of the last game, like that is a slow intro where like uh, where Dan Hagar is driving you up to his settlement and stuff. Unfortunately, no Dan Hagar in this game, so we don't get a uh, John Goodman back, but. Actually, if I remember correctly, you know, the only celebrities in this game are like sports announcers, if you can count those as celebrities. Yeah, th this series has a weird connection with sports because like in the last game we had the um, uh, Blake Griffin bobblehead to collect.
grenades by default have a much shorter fuse than this one. So that's nice. I was constantly like throwing them and like well, like waiting like a year for it to go off in the last game. So and they, have, they have added a focus mechanic where you can kind of see the enemy is now eyes highlighted and you can uh, like magnetically pull Feltrite to yourself. So that's pretty neat. That's also how I'm going to activate my powers later on once I get those. These new kind of mutants are, are really wacky looking too. They, they remind me a lot of... Uh, the uh, really body horror um, heavy stuff from the Quake series, which I mean makes sense also by id Software. Uh, but this one they also brought in uh, Avalanche, who is known for making like the Just Cause series uh, and the Mad Max game, uh, which you know makes a lot of sense given uh, this series' uh, influences it takes from Mad Max and that sort of thing. And also with the the first game's aspirations of being open world, but not quite hitting the nail on the head uh th this one really brings it close to being open world once we get through this opening section i think we'll be right out into it and it's huge and there's so much to explore and lots of worthwhile stuff to find honestly for, for at least like people like me that were a fan of the first game and really wanted to see its formula like expand out this this game was such a godsend it's like I uh, I never would have guessed that we would have gotten Rage 2, but we did. <laughs> yeah, so Overdrive, similar term to a mechanic in the first game, but it works pretty differently. This one is just a recharging Berserk mode. Um, that will just go like this, makes your guns more powerful, uh, kind of changes up how they work a bit makes your, your health uh, just recharge uh, during duration. Uh, and there's also a system where if you keep up a combo, I think it makes your Berserk go longer. Um, I could be misremembering that though. I also feel like this one has a lot more aim assist. <laughs> I feel like I'm just hitting things so much easier than I was in the first game. Decorated war hero, ranger, and role model. Especially for Lily. She took me in when my parents died. The meanest mom this orphan wildcard never asked for. Reporting for duty! Come here! That's Jersey's armor. Jersey. They killed him. You're brave enough to put on his armor, and you're brave enough to do his job. What the fuck is that? An easy target. Can't be. He should be dead. General Cross. General Cross kind of reminds me of in Dragon Age Inquisition. The first Genesis killed everything. That that uh, I never General finished. General Cross, the evil leader of the evil authority. Our own boogeyman. A bedtime story for naughty kids like me. I don't know if Prowley's lost it or if it's really true. Do know this, though. If it is, I'm not gonna stand for it. Son of a stand down! That's a direct order! Watch out!
to spare the lives of your original Arcists for experimentation. But for you, I'll make an exception for old times, Alwina. <laughs> I hear like a growling in my ear. Let's see if we can jump start this. Clear. Wait. I was conscious. Yeah, you were. But your shiny new armor needed a jolt. So, this is it then. This is all that's left. Just over 20 survivors. We're still digging out the ruins. I saw Prowley. Cross, he... He killed her. He killed my mother. I don't know how, but we gotta stop them. And I'll personally wring the neck of that goddamn wrinkled bastard. I never really believed the stories. That the authority would return. Well, they did. And we gotta do something about it. Mom knew what to do. The rangers knew. Wait a minute. They kept their files, the logs. They kept them in the Presidio. The ranger CP? You nuts. Only rangers can go in there. Look at me, Lily. I'm the only ranger left. Holy shit. You really are. So yeah, I am a ranger named Walker, who may or may not be from Texas. Um, so as I was saying, I, I never got super far in um, Dragon Age Inquisition, so I don't know the full um, like relevance of this character. But there's a character in it that shows up at some point and like attacks your home base, and I think he's got like a big mutated arm or something. For some reason, Cross kind of gives me vibes of him. I don't know if there's actually much to that, but I guess maybe it's just because, you know, he's showing up at the, the home base here, right at the beginning of the game. So now we just run back through the battle we just fought. Um, I kind of see, it's kind of sobering seeing, you know, the carnage in the daylight um, from that battle. This one has a lot more. You gotta got hold buttons to do here, things. Probably. Do you accept my eyeballs? No. This is Presidio Security Protocol. State your name, rank, and business. Walrat Unit, Corporal Walker. I'm here to find information about, uh, about my, about Ranger Unit Sergeant Irwina Prowley. Let's see 
what kind of surprise you got for me here, Ghost Prowly. She might be dead, but she's still calling the shots. It's kind of like a like a Superman's dad situation with the uh, the mentor. Ooh, items. I always thought it was kind of weird that they call it ID accession, but in the subtitles it's spelled id accession, like id software. So I don't know why exactly why they in the voiceovers they call it ID. I think that makes a little less sense, maybe. Uh, yeah, so this is just telling me that when I find the arcs, I can get abilities and weapons and stuff out of them. Looks kind of like the arc in the first game. So I just stick my hand into this strange hole and hope for the best? Yeah, stick hand into strange hole. Nothing. I love that prompt. Welcome to the simulation chamber. In here, you will be able to gain proficiency in the use of your arc weapons and any ID accessions. You have successfully installed ID accession dash with the dash accession, you will be able to evade incoming threats and become harder to hit. Good. Again, please. Yeah, so we just get like this recharging dodge, basically. Good work. A simulation will allow you to train in the use of your dash accession to evade enemy fire. All right, give me your best shot. Haha, -ha. that might have been too late to count. Including overdrive, I think really it's six to total abilities. Come back to the main hall. I have more information for you. It was weird. Taking instructions from my dead aunt. Which feels like a pretty good amount for like a fast paced first person shooter to me. I guess technically if you want to consider focus a seventh ability you can. You've had your first ID accession. For you, there is more. There are many arcs still out there. Each arc contains valuable resources that will help your fight against the Anorni. But you can't fight them alone. You'll need help. If Lily is still alive, she will be invaluable to you. But there are other allies. People you may have only heard about. Around the end of the Authority Wars, a few of us in the inner circle of the Resistance initiated what came to be known as Project Dagger. It was designed to put an end to the Authority. Permanently. We knew it wasn't likely that they'd just disappear despite their losses. And furthermore, we knew that General Cross was in possession of technology that allowed him something akin to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Project Dagger was scrubbed when Vineland closed its gates to outsiders. But a pact of sorts remained between me and the other three original Daggers. First, John Marshall of Gunther, a tough, no-nonsense old war horse who led the first fight against the Authority. He understands the importance of technology and spycraft better than anyone. His skills will help keep you off the Authority. So Marshall was in the first game. Second, he... Hagar, oh. Wellspring, daughter of war hero Dan Hagar. She went from guerrilla fighter to mayor of the greatest city in the wasteland. Her access to military grade vehicles will be indispensable. And the third one? And then there's Dr. Anton Bossier. Ex-authority scientist turned resistance fighter. He's a genius when it comes to nanotrite technology and mutations. His skills are a cornerstone of the Dagger Project. All right. Is that it? You will want to know more, Jeff and Rose. 
Your Ranger Armor CPU has logs that will be able to answer many of your questions. Good luck out there. Ranger Walker. Okay, so... So you thought you'd just dump all that on my shoulders and waltz off into oblivion, huh, Aunt Prowley? Well then, I guess it's all up to me now. So all three of uh, Marshall, Lucem, and Kavasir were in the first game in like varying degrees of prominence. Uh, I think Lucem was was the Lily, girl. There are three people I need to find: John Marshall, Doctor Kavasir, and Lucem Hagar. They're all part of a Project Dagger designed to stop the Authority. That's a pretty tall order. Yeah, your mother is no nonsense, even from the afterlife. Too soon, Parker. Yeah, sorry, Lily. But hey. I'm ready to trek out into the wasteland. I think I got just the thing. Come see me. So I believe Lucem was the girl in the Hagar settlement that could teach us about wing sticks. Uh, so she just kind of man, uh, like, did the wing stick mini game uh, where you try to hit the targets. Uh, and Kavasir was, of course, the, the the blind scientist that was kind of on the big cyborg rig that we did a lot of stuff with towards kind of the the late mid um, section of the game, right around the dead city. Um, I'm forgetting how to get around here because that that's all closed up. Um, and Marshall was the kind of the leader of the uh, the resistance at the end, who kind of you know gave us our missions and uh, basically instigated us going to Subway Town to you know do those last few parts of the game. So we need to go and find the three of them, uh, and I believe the game lets us do that in any order. Uh, so it lets us, you know, kind of start getting into the open world aspects pretty quickly here. Can I just jump up there? No. Uh, oh. oh, please don't tell me I'm soft locked in here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I seem to remember getting confused about how to get there uh, when I was playing this before. I forget exactly when I played it, maybe like a, a year or more ago. Some aspects are still kind of fresh, others are not. Oh uh, yeah, I bet if I, I go here and retrace more of my steps of how I actually got here, that would make a lot of sense. You know, when, when you came from a place, it, it makes sense to, you know, go back the same way if you want to get there, I guess. I, I was never much of a navigator, though. Do not hire me to help you get your ship places. It will not go well. Um, but as you may have noticed, uh, the resistance or, you know, the rangers, whatever, uh, you want to call them at this point, uh, have a lot of arc technology now. So the fight is getting a lot more even with the authority, whereas before it was everyone in just like, like shoddy thrown together armor against like the authority with like their full armor with all this technology. Now, now it's a bit more. What does CAC mean? <laughs> Hey, Lily. So what you got? Well, I've got lots of ideas for projects, and with your help, we can get them off the ground. They're going to be key to your survival out there. So, let's get you your ride. Okay, so projects is one of the progression systems in this game. Um, essentially, this is where you can kind of upgrade like systems of the game, if I remember correctly. Um, so this first one with Lily here is basically just the ability to use vehicles. Yeah. I, I've unlocked the vehicles menu, so I guess if I ran out and found a vehicle I could have driven it, but this actually lets me summon vehicles it sounds like. Uh, yeah, so this is basically just like unlock more core game mechanics. Um, and I have a car now. more projects here that would benefit the two of us. You need to beef yourself up, and I need to get Vineland into some semblance of order. If you're lucky, your three dagger project contacts will offer you a similar deal, because you sure need to get tough to take on the authority. Thanks for the tip. All right, I'm heading out. It's a big bad world out there, so be careful. And don't go messing people over. You're a ranger now. You better act like it. Oh, and John Marshall in Gun Barrel is your closest dagger. You might want to start there. And be careful. We need you. Alright. Um, and it's something else coming from the first game. I'll, 
all, the majority of outfits in the first game were uh, very impractical, and a lot of, like, the women were just kind of wearing skimpy clothing, that sort of thing. Uh, but in this one, like, I mean, I, I don't know, like, on a technical level how realistic this is, but, I mean, it's like, she's covered, she's got, you know, packs to put gear in, that kind of stuff. So definitely in that respect, stuff has gotten more uh, more reasonable. All right, I just want to double check that the mission I have is the one to go find um, or oh do I not select a, a specific mission okay there we go I go to the objective on the map and then I can tell it to track it okay I just want to make sure I'm going to uh, John Marshall first since he is the closest and I think the story might kind of expect that to get like more of the um, exposition out of the way and this little tutorial pop-up is like, hey, this one's actually open world. It, it, you gotta explore. <laughs> Here's our car, the Phoenix. Well, look at you. A fresh ranger. I'm Phoenix. I know I look good, but I drive better. Let's you and me go for a spin. And like the, the voice of this car is like a... Like an a western old lady or something I also really like uh, the objective markers like in the world here where we just see the the pink arrows I, I think that looks really nice and it, it helps a lot for clarity on which way to go whereas in the first game you just had to rely on the mini map and the little white dots on it just this one they don't even have the the mini map exactly they just have the you know the kind of more modern compass like the skyrim style uh thing where it just kind of shows you icons of things and how far they might be away from you i got eyeballs on a roadblock it's man-made oh yeah roadblocks these are kind of the equivalent of uh skyrim's uh like bandit uh camps where they'll, they'll kind of try to stop you with them and you gotta go and you know, take out the bandits. This one's a bit more required, I'd say, than bandit camps because you actually have to like run through it and hit a switch to open up the pathway for your vehicle. Oh yeah, there's a lot more like crates you can bash open to get stuff in this one. It feels so much easier to get uh, headshots in this one. Which is going to be very important. Um, actually, I don't know. I don't know if uh, ammo is quite that limited in this one or if they just try to let you go nuts. They probably just kind of let you go nuts because that's kind of, you know, the whole theme of the game. Oh, wait. Yeah, no. Can I? Oh, no. But I'm locked into this while they're shooting at me. And you get uh, project points to kind of yeah, upgrade things by completing objectives like that. Uh, I hear more. Oh, there you are. See, is there fall damage? Mm, doesn't seem like it. Cool. All right, let's keep going. And, and again, just like the first game, I think this game has some really nice looking landscapes. And now that there's more color, there's like a lot more going on with it. And also, you know, this game is, what, like eight years uh, later. So there's a, a lot more advancements in like graphics tech and that kind of stuff. Oh, and there's the, uh, the authority sending in troops. I, I, I love that effect where the, the ship just kind of silently zooms in and it goes like boom as soon as it arrives. It, it it's it really like adds like gravity like like oh crap the authority is showing up. I had forgotten about that. Apparently the car kind of tries to lock onto enemies and if you aren't like like moving your stick uh, that much it'll like try to drive your car directly toward it. It's kind of interesting. Or it seemed like it did. It, it turned red for a moment. Listen, we're still going to meet Mayor Luthor, right? That's a bandit 
post. But it looks like they're hauling fuel. It's a support pit. Topping tank for convoys and raids. Destroying... So here's a... Uh another one of like just an objective somewhere on the map like this is totally optional um but this is basically just run through kill bandits destroy their fuel tanks and it, if i remember correctly there, there's also some pretty decent loot even apart from completing the objectives uh, but the objectives are the real meat because they i believe they give you more like project points and stuff Oof. See, in the first game, in a situation like that, I probably would have died very quickly. But this one, like, I, I just like the, the philosophy they've taken to it, where, like, you know, your health doesn't all automatically regen, uh, like, Call of Duty style. Like, a little bit of it will regen, but for the most part, it's kind of gated down until you do a health infusion or you collect uh, Feltrite and stuff like that. And there's also these nice pink topped containers that are real easy to make out. You just punch them and get items. It said open. Let's see, what's in this room? Oh, yeah, there's usually like a, an art container uh, somewhere that'll give you like uh, more like your character ability upgrade points versus, you know, the project points that are like, you know, the overarching game mechanic upgrades. Gotta, gotta destroy these fuel tanks. Because I guess we don't want the goon squad driving around so much. Or we want to hike up gas prices like in the real world. You know, whatever. Now, I'm pretty sure I remember finding an arc chest in this little area in my last playthrough. And I don't think those are like randomly distributed throughout the world or anything. All oh, right, a little bit of platforming, which is something that this game does that the first one did not do. Um, but it works because, I mean, you get the dash. I actually think you do get a double jump at one point. And also the jump in general is just, I feel like it's a little better than the, the first game's jump. So... Oh, well, there's another one of these pink chests. I wasn't paying that much attention, I don't know if I... Okay, okay, so... Okay, there's two more fuel canisters and there's an arc chest somewhere. There's a... Like a, a quest indicator up in the top left. I'm glad I didn't put my camera there. Um, so somewhere around here... Okay, so there's, there's the gas tanks. And then... Just gotta figure out... Oh. The other ones are like close together so they could destroy each other. I would have thought the art chest would have had a outline from focusing. Maybe not. Maybe they make those purposely difficult to find, which you know kind of makes sense there some of the, like the biggest uh, upgrades you can find in a lot of places you know apart from actual like new weapons and stuff but those are of course in a whole uh, arc arcs themselves come on arc chest where are you Yeah, I do remember this being a decent amount <laughs> of my previous playthrough, just like trying to figure out where the heck the art chests are on the map. It's nice that you get the indicators that like, hey, there is one somewhere, so you're not just aimlessly looking around for something that doesn't exist. Um, I, I, I'm very happy with 
you know, what they did with this one and, like, really seem to kind of think about, like, okay, how do we, like, holistically bring the whole experience together uh, and give you the mechanics to just make it, like, like, you know, you're still looking around, scavenging, searching for things, but you've got the tools to make it so that, you know, it's less annoying than it could be. <laughs> I, oh, there we go. There's the arc chest. It, it, it was just right here in the middle of the room, lighting up. But okay, it's good to know focusing does not reveal the arc chest. Okay, so that gave me a weapon core mod, which, as the name suggests, can be used to upgrade weapons. Uh, let's see, what what are the weapon upgrade options? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, b -b -b weapon. Oh wait. All right, no weapons. Okay. So, okay. So it's caught. Okay. So you need to spend feltrite to unlock different like tiers of the weapon, and then within each tier, there are upgrades that cost the um the weapon upgrade chips or whatever it is I just picked up. Uh, so I can unlock, I can unlock level two of this, and then I can use. A weapon core mod to buy one of these upgrades. Let's see, speedy reload or magazine capacity. I think magazine capacity is all right uh, currently. I'm just gonna put it into speedy reload, and I think no. Okay, I'm unlocked into that. I can't swap between them, so that's fine. All right, so I've believe uh, yeah by the objective indicator that seems like I, I've done everything I can do there. So now we can continue on to the main objective, which I think isn't too much far. Yeah, it's like 400 meters ish. Yeah. Out of Gun Barrel, which. Was Gun Barrel a town in the first game? I don't think. I feel like it might have been mentioned. I don't quite remember. Destination reached. Hello? Oh, Stanley Express is still here. I, I didn't do those quests in the first game, but that's basically like... Message for Ranger Walker here. You can become a postman and deliver stuff for people. I don't know. It doesn't seem like the most exciting of quests. Um, oh, hold on. It looks like my camera has crashed. What's up with that? Uh... Oh, okay. Okay, it looks like it's working again. Sorry about that. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't been looking over at that part of the screen that much. Okay. Uh, so we're back now. Uh, I think my, my uh, I hope my audio was capturing the whole time. It kind of looked like it was all right. I feel kind of antsy about the audio since you know what I found out playing Minecraft uh, on Friday. Um, but let's see what 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 uh, message Stanley Express has for us. Why is this a purchase? Am I gonna have to? Am I gonna have to pay to get my mail at some point? That seems bad. But also, if if the game is kind of what I think it is, and that it's a lot of it is kind of um, satirizing capitalism in some ways, like like that one mission in the first game where you've got to like go through a bunch of hoops just to be able to deliver basic medical medical supplies to some people, like. And I was like, well, this could be just really funky quest design, or it could be like a kind of, you know, interesting, you know, meta design to to poke fun at, you know, capitalism or whatever you want to say. Uh, so I don't know if having to buy the right to get your mail is also fitting to that, or if this is just a weird menu. I, I don't know. I'm going to see what the sandworm invasion is all about. Okay, so it looks like this is. Stanley Express Postal Service, your one and only stop for. So it looks like that's just the equivalent of the job board from the first game. Hey, you side quests. You interested in some wet work? You know, knock some heads, shoot some 200 muties in the paste. Not looking for a job. 
I'm here to see John Marshall. Yeah, as it happens, he's the one looking for a skill trigger puller. We got beauty problems in gum barrel seat, and we can't do shit until we've fucking rectified that. Yeah, we'll see about that. Where do I find him? He's in the Dud Primer Tavern. Always in the Dud Primer. What? Can't miss him. Old, scarred, mean, robo peg, robo peeper, half spares, half guy, you know. I'm heading there now. Oh, uh, whatever that false little greed about tells you, don't try the slime bubble chimichanga. Unless you want to puke your guts out in the thoroughfare. Thanks for the tip. I saw one point, this guy's name is Lance Havoc. What, like, a, like a 90s G.I. Joe kind of name for that? Like, I'm Lieutenant Lance Havoc, and we're gonna go bash the whatever enemy of the week is. <laughs> I guess so this is just saying, like, this, this town actually has, like, you know, people to buy and sell stuff from. Just like, you know, just like the towns in the first game, but I, I think that's alluding to uh, there's gonna be towns that don't have that. There's kind of small outposts or whatever. Uh, so we just got a data pad. Exciting excavations number one. Greetings, faithful reader. It is I, Ransack Tumbledown, collector of antiques and rare curios. Welcome to the first of my published journals, Exciting Excavations. In this installment, I will retell the tale of how I located a device believed to be the first prototype for the infamous wasteland weapon, the Wing Stick. Crafted by a legendary pre apophis genius, Christopher Wing, this device was so effective, it actually decapitated its creator during a test session. <laughs> so there's a number of things I really like here. I like how he spelled antique with uh, A-N-T-E-E-K-S. That's fun. Uh, and also that... The creator of the wing stick was just named Christopher Wing. Like, it's, it's not called a wing stick because, you know, it's kind of got wings and you chuck it. No, no, it was made by a guy named Wing. <laughs> it's like if you found out, like, like chicken wings were made by Joseph Wing or something. I, I actually don't know the history of chicken wings. That could be true, but I don't think it is because, you know, it's actually, you know, the wings of the chicken, right? Um, but also that... the. the like the, the the wings to king back and he just didn't catch it and it just decapitated the the creator that, that's some good content the music coming back in scared me a little bit i wasn't sure what was going on uh hello Excuse me, did I just hear something explode out here? Is that just part of the theming of the... Oh! It just shoots fire out of the bombs sometimes. Okay, I guess it's not much of a dud, is it? Hello, Mr. Solid? Solid TV? Oh, you're new! This is the Dud Primer. Best watering hole in Gun Barrel. Big crowd, rowdy crowd. Marshall trusts me to keep said crowd in check. Name Soul, Soul TV. Don't worry, not here to start any shit. Good for your face. Now you do look like the action loving kind. You should check out Mutant Bash Arena up north. What a show! What a great show! So yeah, Mutant Bash TV is still around. It's changed a bit since the last game, but I mean, what can you expect? Uh, you know, 30 years went by. Uh, oh, what was it? Uh, Shepard, I don't know if you're still around, but what exactly did you describe J.K. Styles as? He was like a mix of, of Trump and someone else. Um, but in his condition, he probably wasn't lasting, you know, the 30 years or whatever. Oh, I thought in the darkness this kind of looked like it would be where the stairs down were, but watch out for the goddamn Rudy's friend. They're sneaky freaks. You look like you're straight out of a fallout, uh, Brucer. Yeah. I used to run with mountain lords. Man, 
things I saw up there in their big battle building. Oh, oh man, the stuff they got stashed. So much gear, guns, and, and stuff. Oh, I love stuff. Well, that was before the Mountain Lords joined up with the Goom Squad and took off. They just left me there. I hightailed it out of there. Never looked back. With all that cool gear and all them sweet guns just laying there. I bet they're still there. I'm intrigued. Just laying there, you say? Have another on me, pal. All right. A real party. Yeah, just buy people booze and they'll tell you how to get some, some wicked loot. Will, you don't give true talk. Uh, I speak the day's true, Marsh. Violence destroyed. Yeah, right. Blown right to shit by mega bad tech <laughs> I ain't biting you, uh, You're just looking for a free fix to Swill here. Violence is gone. <gasps> See? I was talking true. Don't plug it all at once. <laughs> Ranger, huh? Oh, I haven't seen a ranger here in a long time. John Marshall, legendary resistance fighter, war hero. We grew up on stories about this guy. I gotta admit, I was expecting something more impressive. <laughs> Seems impossible. Vineland's defenses were impenetrable. So we all thought. We weren't ready for them. We weren't ready for the authority. They're back then. I'm guessing you'll hear about the Dagger Project. Yep. Problem is, we're under a whole different kind of siege here. Muties. They're clogging up our power turbine in the sewers. Now, if uh, someone was to take care of that. If that's what it takes to get Dagger online, show me what to kill and where. <laughs> you catch on fast. I sent down every Renner killer who walked in here. They all end up dead. It won't take long. <sighs> my uh, my camera's died again. I don't. I don't know what keeps happening with that. I don't know. It. I think it might have happened when I adjusted myself just there. So I don't know if. Maybe where it's plugged into the computer just is like a, a little shaky and it doesn't like to reconnect on its own or something. Anyway, sewer time. I right, Intel traders are people you can pay for like uh, quest info and stuff like that. But hey guys, it's time for another sewer mission. I, I'm just kidding. I don't think this game has a direct equivalent of the, the sewer missions. This is more like just like an actual story quest that happens to take place in a sewer. I suggest you stock up at the market before venturing into those sewers, Ranger. You get that power back for me, and Dagger's back on track. Does this cactus have a quest for me? Welcome to the Dead Primer Tavern, home of the slime vocal Chimmy Changa and the best swamp swill in the wasteland. Check your troubles at the door and dance on in. Okay, so it doesn't directly tell you if something has a quest, it just tells you if they have dialogue, which, yeah, that's kind of neat. Um, you know, kind of just actually have to have conversations with people and see if there's... Riff -raff with guns. Finally, we might be in love. That's a Rory, Rory success, like a roaring success, I get it. Greetings. I'm Rory Success, a famous trade barrel. Come down all the way from Wellspring to recruit for a daring mission against the Squad. Wait, you're not part of the Goon Squad, are you? No, I just beat him up. I'm definitely not part of the Goon Squad. Do you like the Goon Squad? Of course not. They're a blight on the earth. Recently, they had the nerve to take over Gascatran, my gas refinery in the Southern Hills. They are using it to make nitro for their combat cars. That nitro should be mine. I know it's suicidal to attack the left. Nobody 
steals. From roar to success. What do you say? I generally shoot Goon Squad for free. Commendable. But terrible bitch. Alright. <laughs> I like the name Gazcatraz. It's like a it's like a jail for fuel. BG Burger. What does that stand for? Like Big Good Burger? I could go for a big good burger. I know that look. You're a survivor too. You weren't even looking at me. Nosebleed Kate. Hmm. I just recognize that look in your eyes. You've lost people. Bad stuff happened to you. Me too. I lost my entire scaver team. All gone. Just like that. Now I'm here drowning in swill. Too scared to do anything about it. What happened to your team? We were scabbing, looking for scrap. Found a real promising deposit just south of here. We didn't bother checking with our scouts. Got greedy, I guess. So down we went. We didn't get far before the giant was on top of us. Half the team dead in a few heartbeats, squashed like bugs. I don't know how I got out of there alive. The giant. The scouts call it Lug the Nut. Big, mean, mutant freak. If I had your guns and gear, I'd go back and kill it. Lug the Nut. <laughs> what a name. Oh, hey, there's a data pad. Warning, Pestilent Park. To all travelers taking the Razorneck Road, beware. Do not stop for any reason along this road, as it has been infested by bandits. The old sunken car park has been turned into a camp for the goons, and they're killing anyone who comes near. It's best to avoid this road, if at all possible. Report any suspicious sightings to the gun barrel militia. Uh, the reason I came this way is because I was hearing a... I thought I was hearing a sound that, off the top of my head, I don't remember where it's from. Maybe Borderlands, but it was like kind of a, like, like a, like a like a signal sound of like a, like a beacon, or something. That stopped for a split second. I was hearing that, and I'm like, wait, where's that? But okay, I think I was just hearing like part of the music that kind of sounded like it. That was weird. Um, why do you have creepy dolls in the corner, man? Mr. Gus Lariato. Okay. This is Gut Wrench. Chris Craig. So if I remember correctly, a bunch of these, like, NPC names are just kind of, like, like basically the game has, like, a list of NPC names, and when you come into a town, it just fills it with people, and, it, like, fills it with, like, random character models and gives them random names, I guess... You know some level of appropriateness for the area at least in like the character models um but i'm pretty sure when i was playing before there was one time where i saw just two characters with the same name and i was like what is going on uh, uh cross are you related to general cross are, are we gonna have a problem i can't pull my gut out but are we gonna have a problem your bananas look gross too nasty get better bananas um Oh, that, that's you. Okay. Punchy McDuff. Shy now? I haven't seen your face down this way. Punchy's the name. Maybe your peeps told you about me. I got the goods you need out here, and I ain't too high and holy to deal with Vineland people. <laughs> How do you know I'm from Vineland? Ah, you got the outfit, see? I recognize the Dudlers. Dudlers? Uniform like that. The Rangers get them. That means you with Prowly. And that means... Okay, let me take a look at what you have. I mean, if you're talking about Ir Irwina Prowley, she's dead, but her daughter Lily is still around, and she's a Prowley. So, uh, assault rifle rounds. Yeah, I could buy a little bit more of those. How expensive are they? Wait, where's the price listed? Oh, it's, it's one dollar for one dollar for t 
two rounds, I guess? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Okay, and then there's, you can hit X to buy 35. Wing sticks, I, I already got four of those. Grenades, I got four. Health infusions. Wing stick upgrade schematic. These schematics teach you how to craft and then upgrade your wing sticks by using components you find in your travels. Okay. I couldn't quite remember if this game had crafting, but it, you know, it makes sense that it still would because that was a huge part of the first game. Although, you know, with some of the changes they made to, to you know, increase the the speed of the pacing in this game. They did take out some other things that I would say were kind of, you know, core parts of the experience of the first one, but... So, I don't know how much mechanical component, explosive component, electronic component, chemical component, grenade upgrade schematic, health infusion upgrade schematic. Schematics teach you how to craft and upgrade your health infusions by using... Okay, that one sounds very useful. It's 500. Oh, there's not much else I'm gonna be buying. So yeah, I'm gonna get that one because that one sounds pretty important. Uh, and then I don't. I'll, I'll find components. Uh, do I need to like install that, or do I just know it? Uh, okay, so it just gives me the ability to craft them. All right, and then the, the upgrade tree for this one is. At level three, you generate twenty-five percent more health. Level four, health is regenerated twenty-five percent faster. And level five, you take seventy-five percent less damage while the health infusion is active. Okay, okay, okay. I see. It's four chemical and two mechanical to make one. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, uh, grenades increases the blast radius. Inflicts thirty percent more damage. Um, jibbing an enemy with with grenade explosion scatters multiple bonus grenades okay so you can kind of get some chain going off i guess uh ring sticks chance of the wing stick bounces an impact of enabling multiple hits on multiple targets the wing stick deals 15 percent more damage a chance of the wing stick pierces into a target and explodes the wing stick deals 15 percent more damage the durability of the wing stick is reinforced resulting in a 30 percent chance that it can hit hard targets without breaking the wing, st wing stick deals 15 percent more damage okay and then let's see overdrive so i guess overdrive just gives you you know your berserk um immediately you just inject it and you're good to go uh 50 percent of the five seconds can be crafted increases overdrive charge by 50 percent oh i guess maybe the infusion doesn't give you like a full meter it just gives you a section of it but you can upgrade them to give you more Overdrive is generated. Oh, I think like you inject in and then it goes instead of like a dink. It, it like takes a little time for it to go up. Using an overdrive infusion instantly kicks off overdrive. That's interesting. I don't know if I necessarily think, I guess depending on how you're trying to play, that could be an upgrade, but I could also see that being not that good. Uh, ability infusion increases ability cooldown re uh, regeneration for 30 seconds. Okay. Abilities regenerate 175% speed while the infusion is active. Okay. The infusion duration inc increases to 35 seconds. Abilities regenerate a 200% speed and the duration increases to 45 seconds. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, I forget exactly what the cooldowns are like, but I remember them not being that long. So like that would be crazy. Just you inject one and then you just go around just like, like shatter, dash, whatever else i forget exactly what all the abilities are turret drones okay they fly around they just they do more damage fire rate increased okay uh okay i guess this is just say oh this is just like a tally of what i have okay not enough time in menus let's go out to oh uh, I've been here this whole time. This is my first time here. We're literally knee deep in shit, and a ranger waltzes in after ignoring us for years. This day. What are you talking about? Who are you? I'm Zam Wilco, and I run the Gun Barrel Militia so Marshall don't have to. Listen, I'm not complaining if the high and mighty rangers want to get their hands dirty. I've an urgent situation up north. The Yeoman Farm has been overrun by raiders. Bad, since they're a pretty big local food supplier. All my people are needed here 
case the mutants make another push. So can you help? I guess. Well, since you asked so nicely. All right, I gotta help some farmers. So there's also a job board in addition to being able to get mail from the Stanley Express. I guess, I don't know, is job board like specific for each town, but then Stanley Express you can pick up at any terminal? I, I don't know. Blow up dolls with a Z, because 90s, or maybe more of a 2000 thing. Maybe, maybe both. Oop. I, I accepted it, but it looked like it was you know, a little difficult. One this week. Let's hope you got something they didn't. I mean, I got an arc suit, so maybe I do. Um, but yeah, that blow up doll's quest looked like it was rated at like a five difficulty. There's an underground stream down in these old sewers. We hooked it up to a turbine generator. Makes us completely independent. As in, we got our own power supply. We don't have to buy no feltride from greedy traders fixing the market and playing dirty. Mother Nature provides. And how's that working out for you? Well, apart from the occasional wrench in the works, like, uh, say, a muty infestation clogging up the turbine, we're good. We got our own juice. Plus, there's always a gun for hire to do the jobs if things go south. That's what I am? A hired gun? Hell no. You're a ranger. That's a whole different enchilada. A whole lot spicier and meatier. Just making sure, Marshal. Just making sure. Uh, and I think, you know, this early in the game, I'm, pro I'm probably suited for like a one or two level difficulty at the most. So definitely going to wait a bit on doing that one. Speaking of enchiladas, um, <laughs> I know there is you know, a bit of a debate uh, about what's better, Moe's or Chipotle, um, which, which I don't think uh, Shep is still around, but, but she disagrees with me. She she likes Chipotle better, I like Moe's better. But uh, I, I had Chipotle last night for dinner and Moe's today for lunch. And I think I've kind of figured out where like a, a broad stroke of the differences lie. I think Chipotle has more along the lines of like spice. Their 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 meat seems to have a bit more of like a bit of a, a kick to the seasoning and that sort of thing. And Moe's, I feel like, is has a bit more of an overall savoriness to it, which is what really attracts me to Mexican food. I love savory flavors, and so. I, I could be wrong, but I think that might be where the delineation is. So if you're more into spicy stuff, you gravitate toward Chipotle. If you're more into savory stuff, you gravitate more toward Moe's. I could be wrong about that. I could be totally wrong about that assessment. Moe's could be the spicier one, and Chipotle could be more savory. I, I admit that I could be wrong. I'm not, I'm not you know, like a professional food analyzer or anything. Uh, but that's just kind of the vibe I get from, you know, having them back to back. So... Oh, hey, there's hey an arc. Marshall, did you know there's an arc down here? Just sitting there. Oh, yeah. Maybe you got the nanotrike config it takes. See if you can't get it to open sesame for you. Ah. For that was scanning. weird. I didn't mean to dash like that. I guess I like security lightly hit the button and then fully pressed it. Welcome to arc 402A. Interesting. Uh is this gonna be the shotgun? Yeah. Shotgun. Oh man, I've only seen these in old hollow logs. Uh, shotgun in this game is so good. Okay. 
That's interesting. So aiming down sides actually changes how the gun works. Ooh, I like that animation. You see like the sides of the gun kind of come out. Oh, that looks so cool. Okay, so I see it's more of if you want like a like a straight shot or a spread. And then of course overdrive changes things further. I'm not exactly sure what it does for this. Is that just the more knockback? I, I don't know. It looked cool, like the, the, the slug was like glowing red, like it was molten or something. Ah, the old corridor sweeper, eh? You got lucky. Not many of those still around. Then only you can use it. It's a uh, hardwired to your nanotrite signature. Okay. Uh, and they, they, they know, they know the shotgun is, is really fun for mutants. Ooh. Hey, mutants actually drop stuff now. They, they drop in mutant spores. Which, I, I think that's a crafting material, uh, unless I'm misremembering. Time to punch a box. Ooh, I said that's a little gross. Is that, is that like a mutant nest? I don't remember anything quite like that from the first game. <laughs> Did you see how far back that guy flew? I forgot the, like, I have no memory from before of, like, your your melee attacks kind of locking in and just completely obliterating dudes like that. Like, I'm sure, like, stronger enemies, that, that won't happen. But because these were, like, low-level level mutants, I could just run in and just destroy them. Oh. This game does so well at just, like delivering you this like hyper excess and like really delivering on a power fantasy <sighs> oh. oh you're uh, you're missing a leg guy sorry to hear that is a little low at the moment, but... Oh, hello. Can't tell if that's where I came from or not, but since that would be a point of no return, I'm gonna go this way first. Ah, I wonder why my shotgun's blinking. That's a little distracting. <laughs> I don't know why I ran at the obvious kamikaze to do a melee attack. That is not a smart move at all. And they just like stepped up so much like lighting and atmospheric effects that I thought were already like pretty cool in the first game. I don't, 
I don't remember there being any like just water dripping that you can get going down your screen. I feel like they removed that. But other than that, like, look, you've got just here, you've got like uh, like these like particle effects flowing around. There's supposed to be like spores full of mutant goo. You've got, you know, the light coming in. You've got the the blood dripping over here. Let's see if I can actually get blood to drip on my face. Because, you know, that's what everyone wants to do with their life. Just get blood dripped on their face. Uh, no, so it doesn't actually put it on this, like, in the view, like, you know, like, in the, in the previous game, I like, water droplets be like, Rrr. like, it, it doesn't do that in this one. Um, which, I mean, I kind of get, you know, they're trying to keep things fast-paced. They're trying to keep you running around and doing things. If your vision was getting obscured by stuff like that, it would get, you know, disorienting and potentially frustrating real quick. But maybe it was like optional? <laughs> what is... Okay, a, a goose act that can give out a uh, Feltrite. Man, it's, it's kind of feeling like Mutant Bash already. Oof. These guys make spookier noises. I also like how they've uh, updated the mutant design. Like, they're still, you know, recognizably mutants. But they've got a bit more going on with the armor. They've got the spiky bits coming up. I think they made them a bit, like, taller and lighter. Whereas in the first game, they were just kind of, you know, a lot more lower and feral. They still act very feral in this one. Um, but they look, you know, a bit like they've evolved, maybe a little bit. I mean, given that, you know, full-on mutation is on the table, it seems very possible that they could have evolved. How do you... Alright, fine. <laughs> I like to hit things to open them, but I guess let the interact... Ah! Where did you come from? Gotta open this heavy duty door. I, I like how in this one, most interactables, if not all of them, are marked with, with pink. So that you can easily identify, like, okay, I can do something with this. But I think, you know, that was a little bit frustrating the first game, especially with, like, a bunch of doors that look exactly like other doors, but you can't actually open them. I feel like similar instances in this game, they would just not give the the fake doors the uh, oop wrong button. I'm used to the uh, the first game's controls where you use R1 to open up the the weapon menu, but in this one you just do a Y like a uh, like a normal modern shooter. And also, like a normal modern shooter, in this one, uh, reload and interact are actually on the same button. Instead of, you know, the, in the first game it was like, you know, reloads X, which is normal, and then interact is A, which, you know, is normal in other genres. I think jump was Y, and B was crouch. I think, yeah, B is still crouch in this one. A is still jump. Um, but X is reload and interact, and Y is your weapon wheel. And I mean, with all like adding like the powers and still keeping the gadgets and that kind of thing, like it's definitely nice that they at least you know consolidated, you know that one thing. Also, just you know on top of, you know being familiar to how other shooters work. I'm also really, like, I also played the first one on this controller, um, but this uh, Xbox controller, had, I can't really see it that well, but it's got buttons down here that I, I just have mapped to uh, A for the left one and X for the right one, so I don't even have to... Like you said, it's gummed up with some nasty mutant goo. Yeah, you made it all the way down to Muty Central and you're still standing. Outstanding work, Ranger. Now you just need to find the lid and crack it open, and you can flush it out. 
Um, so I don't have to take my, my, you know, my thumbs off the sticks, like, most of the time. You know, I can, I can easily, you know, jump and reload and interact as I need to. What do you mean? I'm, I'm sure a lot of people uh, by this point probably know about this kind of thing, but, like, I just, I love this kind of controller. Like, getting the Steam controller, that was one of my favorite features of it, just the, the huge paddles where you just kind of squeeze it and you get your input. That always felt so nice. I also, you know, in general, I also really like the, um, the, uh, how, what would you call the, the, the pads on the, uh, Steam controller, where you use it kind of like the, the best version of a trackpad possible, uh, to, you know, aim. Uh, I don't like it so much for movement on the left, I usually use the joystick on that for movement, but I really like aiming with that thumb pad. And really the only reason I'm using the Steam controller for for this game is because I have this through Epic. <laughs> and Epic doesn't play nice with the Steam controller, unfortunately. Um, the first game I played with this controller anyway just because of the weird control scheme. Like, especially like choosing weapons. They expect me to use the right stick, which was the trackpad. And just picking weapons like that just felt wrong. Ooh, big boy. Well, that was easy. <laughs> uh, where's the other one? Or wait, are those the two? Ah. Are the mutants actually like kind of talking in this one? I swear it sounded like he said something instead of just like screeching. Are the mutants getting smarter? Okay, I think that guy, I think that one told me to die. So they almost certainly are learning language. Ah. Yeah, even like their screams are sounding a lot less feral now. Interesting. I don't think I noticed that in my last playthrough. Ah, where'd you come from? I thought I heard another guy coming after me. Oh, there are other guys. Oh, this is weird. I've got to hold that one, but it doesn't tell me that. Does this game still have the defib mechanic? I don't know, actually. I don't see a, an indicator on the HUD like the first game I had. That seems a little dangerous. Actually, my handle is xxswaglordxx. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ranger Walker. There you are. Hello. This is my armory. My base of operations. From here, I'll be able to start working on Project Dagger. Now, with the juice flowing freely again, there are a few more projects I could use some help with. Okay. I bet there is. Walker. 
These projects come with benefits for you, too. While I'm setting up Dagger, you might as well get beefed up for the grand goddamn cataclysm. Don't know if you know, but Project Dagger involves you driving a jury-rigged tank into Authority Headquarters alone and manually distributing a nanotribe murder Mickey into the grand ghoul himself, General Cross. Sounds like fun. Guess I better get busy then. Guess you better. I'll reach you on the comm box when I need you. Okay, so I've got Marshall's projects now. Um, although Project Dagger sounds very similar to the final mission of the last game, where the last one was like, oh, you bring in the USB drive to hack into their machines, and like, oh, now this one, you bring in the USB drive or ejector or whatever and kill General Cross. I don't know. Uh, but let's see. So much available as a start, but others require you to unlock new tiers by leveling up his operations. Increase operations level by completing locations or activities. Okay, so like various like objectives just around the map, similar to the uh, that gas station where I fought the the, the goon squad. Uh, those are the operations, and so different operations pertain to different project managers. I guess we can call them. Um, so Marshall's case is like kill and destroy. So a lot of like destruction or like, you know, just killing a bunch of bandits, those kind of things. Um, and that will unlock the different tiers of his projects. Um, so right now we only have the first tier, of course. Let's see. Bullet bag carry 25% more of each bullet ammunition type. I don't know why they do this. There's like empty spaces here unless like late in the game um, you get more. Because I, I didn't finish this game in my first playthrough. Uh, but it just feels really awkward to go like from oh, okay i'll go from this over to that wing stick upgrade right oh no there's this I, I don't know maybe that's supposed to make it easier to like navigate down to other layers but it just feels bizarre carry up to six throwables of each type okay um reduce shakes and blur when taking damage um any attack on an unaware enemies deals five times damage wow that's like a it's like a wrestling sneak attack. <laughs> People in wrestling like get hurt it's so bad from sneak attacks. It's wild. Like you know, if they're just doing a talking segment and someone's or someone's like runs up and whacks them, they're totally down. Or if they're in the middle of the match and someone that's not in the match like comes up and like grabs them like that that hits them way more than anything their regular opponent would do. <laughs> Uh, grenade, grenades can be deflected with a well-timed melee strike when the grenade is flying through there. That sounds cool. And I do have three upgrade points. I think I'm going to go for surprise attack to begin with. Um, I think I'm going to get the throwables bag. Oh, do I have tier... Okay. I see. Oh, did I? Oh, I guess maybe I get project. I'll get project points by doing objectives. Um. I'll leave grenade tennis, so I'll keep this upgrade point to get something else. Wait. No. Okay. So these are the same kind of points. I'm confused about. Why did I, just get this tier by buying stuff? That's interesting. Oh well. Grab whatever. You'll need every edge you can get. Thank you. Uh, and that data pad isn't anything, but this one is. Black Baron Visions. Woke from a nightmare with a yelp this morning. It was about that damn Black Baron. I'd hoped to never think about him ever again. I dropped a building on that murderous bastard, and I still ain't sure if he's really dead and gone. I take a crew there to dig out the body just to be sure, but with all this muty business, I'm needed here. At least I know we killed the last of his crew. Cost me thirty of my best guys to do it, though. It hasn't been long since those old friends have visited me in a nightmare either. Uh, so it looks like I've got a quest to go find that for him. Avian Haunch of Indeterminate Origin. Okay. 
Hell's Infusion, Wingstick. Oh, that was just me stepping. Okay. Another data pad. Message from E. Prowley. Oh. John, a long time ago I learned from Jack what his people did to all that ARC tech they had assembled during the war. Jack had his people lock it up in old ARCs to serve as depots for the commandos. Weapons, nanotrite dispensers, all safely stored. I've investigated a few arcs, and it seems only verified rangers are allowed access. I'm sorry I kept this from you for so long. I know I put Violin before our friendship, and I'm sorry about that, Jack. I was with him when he died. Oh, I'm sorry about Jack. I was with him when he died. Okay, so okay, so I guess that explains why we can find arcs with equipment. Uh, I guess you know that, that makes more sense than just like, oh, no one ever went in here. Half a slime vogel. Is that what that is? Looks like part of an engine, but okay. Or maybe that was the takeout container. I don't know. There it is. My little dagger puzzle piece. A scrambler. You're gonna need it if you want to get past authority ground sec. But it still needs a bunch of work. You didn't want to come in here to tell me that? You were just going to hang out in the other room? Okay. A little, little weird there, buddy. Uh, does this elevator just take me to where the ladder would? Yeah. I mean, I guess at least it's wheelchair accessible. Not, not, nice job, Marshall. Like, that was interesting. It's like, I was able to get my gun out for a moment. Do you see that? I don't know. Maybe it was a... I don't know if I, like, somehow stepped out of, like, an area marked as a peaceful zone. Or if that was just... Maybe it was just, like, a jumping and landing animation. I don't know. Wait, can you... Oh, yeah, they're sliding. Okay. Kind of surprised that wasn't covered in the uh, initial tutorial, right? Yeah, no, it was just no crouching. It didn't even tell me about running. Another data pad. Greenside Lookout MIA. I've been working on gun barrel's early warning system. Got a big lookout tower to the west, helping us keep an eye out for anything nasty coming our way. I think something has happened to our watcher. She hasn't checked in for two days and her old car is gone. I fear the worst. As soon as the muties are dealt with, we should send a patrol. At least I assume that's M MIA, or maybe her name's Mia? I don't know. I'm on the other side of the bar now. Hi, Gulo. Thanks for backing my story. Thanks. I needed this because, well, see? Really needed it. I mean, really. Do you, do you need help, Hulo? You know those nanotrites you got swimming in your bloodstream? Yeah, they seem pointless, right? Well, they ain't. Brainiacs figured out a way to program them using uh, nanotrite strains. Real wildcat stuff. Gives you, well, uh, superpowers. Most of these were lost, but a few backups survived. In some Where are you? Rocks. Do you get you need? Know where I can find one? stuff works. Well, if you want some egghead explanation, you gotta talk to Dr. Kavasia. Okay, that's gotta be a glitch. I, I think Marshall is supposed to be out here, but he's back down there. You okay, Marshall? That was interesting. Oh. I can't even 
go actually listen to him say it. I work for Marsh exclusive. <laughs> I get them all the goods and blow down dirty dirt on all that's going on here in GB. In the big wasteland. Wellspring. Everywhere. Even Vineland. <laughs> Marsh took me in, see? I was fading fast in the gutter, getting by one hustle at a time. <laughs> Small kid, too. Already hitting the swell hard, getting plonkers on Huff if there was no drink. Uh, he got me out of shit city and kept me warm in bed. <laughs> he keeps me in top shelf swill, too. <laughs> Not the real rock guy I used to swig. Oh, it's good. It's a good life. It's better than being dead. <laughs> getting plonkers on Huff. That's not a, uh, a, a, a turn of phrase I've heard before. She looked like she would have been someone kind of important, but I guess not. Are you the information broker? Bridget Hartman. Questions? I have answers. Chad Monroe. Wow, you look like such a savory character. Step closer. Let me see your eye slits. Let me stare right into your soul. And yes, I know what you want. You want intel and data. Low down dirt. Chapter and verse. Chad Monroe can deliver, but it'll cost you. Yeah, I'm looking for intel. So it looks like it's all chests and authority sentries. Yeah, you'll come again. But why would I need to buy that because when I'm out in the open world I can just focus and it will show me like beams coming down from the sky where chests and stuff are so like I don't know why that would be useful Andy Wasteland Tog the Tyrant Davies, Dave Ambrosia, Stacy Mack. Got uh, quite a few names in this list of theirs. Uh, Ian Craig, Annabelle Mis Mischel, Miskel, another data pack. The Cactus Jack. Like, like the wrestler? The small tin automaton known as Cactus Jack has an, import, has an importance that far outstrips its meager stature. In the time before Apophis hit, the Jacks were totemic artifacts. They were used during feasts and communal eating ceremonies. The ritual began with a request for food the tribesmen desired. This could take the form of tiny stuffed shells or even cylinder-like tubes. They served everything piping hot free of lice, maggots, or disease, as hard as that may be to believe. Cactus Jack rep represented more than just food. It represented the collective hopes and dreams of a nation. When many went into hiding, they took their Cactus Jacks with them, prized far above all their possessions. Few remain, but where, but where they stand, determination follows. Okay. So after reading that, I kind of doubt it's named after Cactus Jack the Wrestler, unless there's just someone on the team who's a fan and they was like, yeah, let's give it this name. Because uh, that, that doesn't read to me m much like it would take inspiration from uh, the Wrestler. But also, I feel like Cactus Jack could be something coming, like, Cac Jack, you know, it has that nice, like, I don't know if that counts as alliteration, uh, but something along those lines. It just sounds nice to get it. Up. You do in time as well. <laughs> then take in the face of a man who's lost it all. I, I literally cannot take in your face, sir. Can't hear your voice now either. Then one day the goon squad just rolled on in and took everything. Killed my people right before my eyes.
and I didn't even raise a finger. I ran like a low-down, dirty coward I ran. Been hearing a lot about these goons lately. They used to be small time, nothing to worry about. Now they're everywhere with fancy guns and lots of supplies, and they kill without mercy. They're recruited aggressively too, swallowing up smaller outfits. Join or die is the deal. Kind of a sucky deal. You look like one of those old rangers. Know what it would make me feel better if those goon swine got what they deserved. I, I could totally be a voice actor for this game, you know? <laughs> yeah, this this town's getting glitchy. I'm uh, I'm uncomfortable. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. Uh, uh, right, because this town's just a big circle. I'll get back around to where the sewer entrance was. And the exit. Back Outstanding work. Yep. Well, I had a sneeze coming, but it just kind of went away. All right, let me see, quests. Ooh, sorry. Uh, boo, boo, boo. All right. Anyway, let's go find Lusum, I suppose. From what I remember, her, her story is interesting, I, I think. In addition to just, you know, having more color and looking prettier, like, they also put in, like, a whole bunch more detail, a lot more objects, because, you know, like, the initial wasteland in the first game was totally just... Uh, Oh yeah, so those roaming traders, you can honk your horn to buy stuff from them. Uh, I don't remember really bothering with them because they sell, for the most part, the same stuff as traders in towns, I think. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, but you know, the first game, like that first part of the wasteland, and really the second part too, was like majority just like a canyon. And sure, there were a couple of structures, there were like buildings here and there, but this like, it, you know. It feels a lot more like there was a world here that was torn apart and then people came and kind of reformed the world and just like you know all the buildings scattered around and I, I mean okay we're not in a very good section right now for demonstrating that but you know where we just were like it definitely feels like uh, a place that was once lived in and two degrees being lived in again. For Wellspring at the moment, though, and I, it looked like, yeah, it's it's like right up this hill, more or less. Ooh, what is that? They got a fancy welcome sign for Wellspring. Also, this is like a completely different Wellspring. I get, I guess they moved, or they built up a lot around the city. Actually, no, there's there's no way it's the same one. The environment around it's totally different. Let's see if we can't get a hold of Mayor Lusum Hagar. Oh, hey, Rusty is still here. Let's see. I don't think... Yeah, this one doesn't really so much let you, uh... Just, like, get out and put your car immediately into a garage. How do I get out? There we go. I wonder if it's the... Don't clap back. If you basic, you basic. Interesting. Auto trader sell vehicle ammo and auto parts, which are used to upgrade your vehicle. Okay. Uh, Rusty Junior. 
You're not the same Rusty I know. What? Anyway. You're not getting in here. Go Me? back to your discount rack in the sewers. Oh, that do, do I have to wait in this line or looking bomb. Looking dope. Looking glitter. And That's some cool studs you got on there, bud. It looks like a Oh hey! Wait. You honor us. A real ranger? ranger? Looking bomb. Looking Welcome slick. to Wellspring. There's more to police in this place than just keeping roughnecks in check. Nobody gets in here looking like some wasteland slum scum. You got standards at Wellspring. Feel me? Lance Havoc, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, I just reached the same name from Gun Barrel. Um, so there's a dress code for getting into the city? That's interesting. Okay, so this character. This character is marked as at rage. But. I don't know what the. Okay. My, my theory is that this character is supposed to respond to things that get tweeted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on Twitter here. I'm going to tweet at rage. And see if anything shows up. Is this how I do something with that one dude in Wellspring? In Rage 2? At Rage. Okay. And tweeting now? Is this character gonna do anything with that? I held him down and forced him to eat all of them. <laughs> Every crawling, stinky little one of them. I mean, he's excitedly moving, but he doesn't seem to actually be saying anything. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if this is just a weird joke or if this is some feature. Or if this is like, maybe the feature was discontinued. I I don't know because I, I I came to this game like a little a little late. I didn't play it a bunch. So I don't. Yeah, I I don't know. He's 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 definitely not read. Oh. I guess I fell on the microwave and destroyed it? That scared me. I thought at rage attacked me or something. So every crawling stinky little one of them. So I, I'm confused about how this at rage man is supposed to work. Maybe I'll look that up at some point, but he has he has baffled me <laughs> since my first playthrough. Anyway, man, oh, this is such a different wellspring. Although, turn the fuck around. Don't tell me you got the same threads as me. Oh, hell no. You totally ripped off my goddamn old socks. This ends now. I want you to drop those clothes and burn them right here. You hear me, bro? I not. If any fucking one is going to drop any fucking thing, it's you. Who should fucking drop your pants and shoes? That's an arm. Dropped him. Damn it. Didn't wanna. Well, now he's dropped. Maybe just don't.
What? What? Do Dog and Bone Von Carrot Cake, are you okay? I don't know what I just witnessed. That was weird. Uh, oh, at least at least Cola Cog is still a thing. I um. I hope that guy's gonna be okay. I I don't know where the other guy went. Should I report him to the police? Was that illegal? I don't know. L l laser fist? Okay. J j just Tony. He's just Tony. Uh, all right. Well, let's uh, let's go into the mayor's office. Stop right what? there, shit stain. We're on lockdown. What? Why? I'm looking for the mayor of Wellspring. Now you're in the right place, but at the wrong time. Mayor Hagar and her staff are in lockdown. Whatever your business, you can wait. Try another day, or don't try at all. Why? Has something happened? Nope, and I aim to keep it that way. Nobody gets in, nobody gets out. The mayor has bigger problems than you, Sideshow. Now, as I said... You hear that? No. So for some reason, this sequence mainly like the beginning part where you come in and there's just the dudes lined up. For some reason, that kind of gives me Duke Nukem Forever um, vibes, but but not like, not like I feel like this part's bad, but just like I feel like this is almost kind of like what Duke Nukem Forever was trying to be, maybe. And. Honestly, I don't. I don't have that much of an opinion on Duke Nukem Forever. I haven't played it myself. Uh, of course, I, I know its reputation, and I've seen some gameplay. And you know, it, it's definitely not the best game ever. Uh, but I remember way back when I did play a demo of it and thought it seemed all right. Then again, I was a kid who probably wouldn't even have known that Ride to Hell Retribution was a bad game. So, big big grain of salt with that one. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, honestly, Duke Nukem Forever, it, it, probably a lot of its reputation just comes from, like, it was a disappointment after classic games. Impressive. You think it can catch a bullet, too? No. Lusum Hagar, mayor of Wellspring. Used to be a wingstick whiz kid. Nowadays, backs it up with a pistol. Instrumental to the Dagger Project. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. I'm here about the Dagger Project. Huh. Just a very exclusive list knows about that project. And you're not on it. Prowley sent me. Prowley, huh? Prowley's dead. Bynum was raised to the ground. She's a hologram. I can't explain. I'm Walker, the last of the Vineland Rangers. God damn it. More of these assholes! Ranger, let's take these fuckers out. Then we'll talk. All right. What's the situation down there? Same. They gunned down your people, I gunned down them. There we go. You got the skill for the kill, I grant you. Thanks. <laughs> These 
goons are thoroughly dead. Not what I expected from your boxed-in little compound. <laughs> You're different. You ready to talk now? Yeah. Let's talk. You want to tell me what's going on here? Dagger was designed to stop the authority once and for all. Plans fell by the wayside when Vineland cut ties with us. I'm more than willing to reboot the project, but as you can see, I have more pressing matters. I can see that. Who are these guys? Tired thugs. The Goon Squad. Small-time bandit outfit. Who sent them? Only one scumbag with balls enough to pull a stunt like this. Clegg Clayton. Richest asshole in town. He's been eyeing the mayor's seat for a while, but lately he's been upping his game. Using bribed officials, he's laid claim to all of the city's military hardware, including the vital parts needed for Dagger. So I kill him and take back the hardware? No deal. We gotta proceed with some caution here. First, I wanna know where he gets his backing from. Second, we need to find out where he keeps all of that property. You got a plan? He's got an ego the size of an ecopod, but we can use that. If you get close to him, pay him lip service. Get his trust. Then, you can easily plant this gizmo on his computer. It'll let me download all of his juicy data. Who's backing him, who's supplying the goon squad, and where he keeps the seized supplies. Clegg Clayton likes to surround himself with the rich and famous. They hang out at his so-called winner's lounge. You figure out a way to get in there, and you're well on your way to getting that gizmo planted. Okay, I'm on it. Excellent. Grab the gizmo, get into Clegg's office, and stick it on his computer. So, if you remember from the first game, Clayton was the name of the mayor in that one. This is that guy's son, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> she's got a picture of uh, the old Hagar settlement, I think. Or no, maybe that's part of the old Wellspring. I'm not, I'm not certain. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's it's definitely one of the two. Not like there's that many options from the first game. Um, I also noticed she has a picture of the uh, the merchant from the first game, from uh, the Hagar settlement there. Uh, I, I I don't know if they were supposed to have had some kind of relationship. Um, I, they could have been a couple, or maybe he was like her uncle or something. I don't even know. Uh, well, because she's Dan Hagar's daughter, and that that was that was not dan i forget what that character's name was um mick maybe mick hagar let's see what the state of that says update southeast elevator good evening mayor hagar the elevator at the southeast edge of town was supposedly built uh has supposedly been out of commission for months now but i pressed my ear to the door on my patrol last night and i can definitely hear something down there sounds like a bunch of yahoos messing around you want me to break down the door? <laughs> Just give me the nod. I have some explosives in the arms locker and can send a team down there whenever you want. Alright, so something shady is up with that elevator. Data pad. Wyatt Ferris, new office. Hey there, Chief. I was wondering if there was any news about finding me a new office in town? <laughs> My days are spent between a dumpster full of Mary Bloods offcuts and a shack full of crap that smells like a dead body anyway. I don't want to complain, but the smell just won't wash out of my clothes. I've started sleeping with my mask on from Ferris. Hmm. Uh, is there anything else to grab in here? Oh, one more data pad. Uh, Mako, goon spotted. Boss, I know you're not sleeping well right now, so I don't want to disturb you at night. Uh, uh, out on a patrol last night, we spotted four or five guys trying to scale the cliffs on the south side of town. I, I went to get some of my crew so we could wipe them across the rock face, but by the time I got back, they were gone. Uh, I don't know what's got them feeling brave enough to approach Wellspring, uh, but I suggest we post a guard out there overnight. Interesting. I wonder, was that was that supposed to be directed to Ferris, who's not sleeping well because of the uh, because of the uh, the stink in his office? another data pad wellspring public library 
Mayor Hagar, I just wanted to say thank you for giving us the space to store the collection of books that we've been able to put together at City Hall. The townspeople are still a little tricky to convince on account of many of them being illiterate, but uh, the picture books are already very popular. Our collection grows with every visiting trader, and I can't wait to see what we'll get next. Oh, I wonder if any of them are the books from the first game, like, um, I think it's one called, like, A Tale of Two Mutants. Uh, they're also, like, uh, Durar's Tales or something like that. Uh, I, I forget, because I, I, you know, I didn't pay that much attention to them, because there's, there's junk. But, um, anyway, it is 10 o'clock. Um, you know, I've been streaming for two hours, uh, so I'm going to sign off here. Uh, uh, as always, this was really fun. Uh, next time, we're going to go and try to confront uh, Clegg Clayton. Um, I am Peanut Buffer. Uh, I love doing this with y'all. Uh, I will see you Wednesday for more Rage 2. Have a nice night, y'all. Bye-bye.